Hey friends, Ash here with 10 Cents. Today I'm gonna to be going over with you guys my top 10 most complimented fragrances of 2020 designer edition. Yeah, I know this year is not really the best year for compliments. Lots of people couldn't go out at all. And usually you kind of have to be going places in order to pull compliments. Usually compliments are gonna come from people you know, coworkers, friends, family members, people like that. People that already know you are gonna be more likely to approach you and compliment you. Of course, there are also professions that can lead you to getting more compliments than other professions. If you're constantly interacting with the public, probably gonna have a higher likelihood of getting a compliment than if you work from home. So like I said, 2020, not a great year for compliments, but this is a video that people always look forward to. It's always really highly requested. So here we go, 2020 Most Complimented Fragrances Designer Edition. Fragrance number 10 is a fragrance that's very affordable, so it's not gonna break the bank if you wanna pick it up. That's a really big positive. Performance on it is good as well. It's a very sweet fragrance, and oftentimes sweet fragrances are gonna be the best compliment pullers. Not always, but it usually does help. It makes it have more mass appeal, and this one definitely has that. Also a little gourmand touch to it, which is nice. It is right there. It's. Ferragamo Womo. So this one has tiramisu, it has tonka, it's got ambroxan, a little bit of spicy pop in there as well. This one really easy to wear, really easy to pull off. The bottle also kind of makes a statement. Some people are gonna think it's tacky, some people are gonna think it's cool. So for this one, let's do a tacky or cool. And in my opinion, Ferragamo Womo is a cool bottle not tacky. If you want to, you can cast your vote in the comments as well as to whether you think this bottle is tacky or cool, but I'm sticking with cool. Really, really good in fall and winter time. You can use it day or night. It also doubles as a great date night fragrance. Again, compliments. This has it, mass appeal, this has it. It's a little bit sexy and it has that sweetness going for it. Number 10, Ferragamo Womo. This one, really, really nice for pulling compliments. Very versatile, very easy to wear, inexpensive as well. The next fragrance, number nine, is a little bit further down on the same shelf. Also really sweet, also warm, also good for fall and winter time. It's sometimes hard to find. So that can be a little bit of a knock. It's not a brand that you would typically wanna to pay too much for the fragrances for, uh, but this one, because it's hard to find, goes for a premium. It's this one right here, Mercedes Benz Club Black. It has vanilla, benzoin, incense, ambroxan, and bergamot, some of the notes in the fragrance. Like I said, this is a fragrance that oftentimes you're gonna to have to pay a premium to get. I've seen it at discounters going for around $70. When most fragrances from this house, you can pick up around 30. That being said, the quality here is really high. If you like vanilla fragrances, you're gonna like this fragrance. It actually has some similarities to other more expensive fragrances like uh, Guerlain, Spiritus, Double Vigny. It has a little bit of that feel going on. And it also gets compared to Perry Ellis Black Vanilla Oud Absolute, which is one of my wife's all-time favorites, so goes without saying, she loves this one as well. This one also, I think, would be a great date night fragrance. It's maybe not quite as mainstream as Ferragamo Womo in terms of how it smells, so I think between the two, Womo probably slightly easier to pull off, not that this one is difficult or challenging at all because it's not. So number nine, Mercedes-Benz Club Black. If you like vanilla and you can find this for a decent price or honestly, just in general, pick it up. Number eight, same shelf down this way, a huge, huge compliment puller. People have talked about it since it came out. Very popular release. One of the better releases from the house over the past number of years, if not just straight up the best release. It's this one right here, Azaro Wanted by Night. It has cinnamon, it has tobacco, it has incense, it's got mandarin orange. This one is fantastic in the evening and it's another fragrance better in fall and winter. Actually, most of these fragrances are gonna be fall and wintertime fragrances. Those are the ones that I gravitate toward more myself. 
I like them more. I like fragrances with more richness, with more complexity, with more things going on. And so oftentimes I gravitate toward wearing those more often. So this one, in my opinion, big improvement over the original Wanted, really doesn't have a whole bunch to do with the original Wanted in terms of how it smells. This one is spicy, warm, sexy. It does have a little bit of an edge to it as well. So this one is a big love for me. Really, really like it. And it's grown on me more and more over the years since I first got it. Azara Wanted by Night, best in the line for sure. Number seven is up here, kind of toward the back over there. This one I did not really care for at all when it first came out at all. It is Dior Homme 2020. And there's a good reason I didn't care for this one. This replaced Dior Homme. And it did it in a way that I didn't like and still don't really like. The original Dior Homme makes really, really, really good use of iris. It smells fantastic, very gentlemanly, sophisticated, high-end. It's like a true high-end designer fragrance. With Dior Homme 2020, they kicked that iris to the curb, put in a whole bunch of Isoe Super, put in a whole bunch of cashmere, and here we go. There's also vetiver, cedar, and bergamot in here. Ultimately, this is a very modern, fresh, woody fragrance. It still is sophisticated. You can still dress this up very easily. You can wear this with the suit. You can wear this to the office. You can wear this on a date. You can wear it anywhere. That's what they were going for. It definitely 100% has more versatility than the original Dior Homme. I just really miss that iris. And so as I tested this more throughout the year, I got positive feedback and I really did start to like and appreciate how usable it is. It's not an offensive smelling fragrance. It doesn't have anything that's really, you know, assaulting to your nose. Sure, it's got a lot of Isui Super and it's got a lot of uh, cashmere, but it smells pretty good. Number six, I've got right up here as well on the top shelf. This one is another fragrance that I revisited this year, gave it more wear and started to appreciate a lot more than I did initially. So two fragrances that I did that with. It's this one, Versace Eros Flame. Now, I don't really have to tell you guys about Versace Eros and how popular the line is and how many compliments the line can pull because Everybody's talked about that, including myself. So yeah, Eros Flame, it's a big compliment puller. I think that it's more versatile than the original Eau de Toilette. I think it's more wearable in more situations. You can pull this off in spring, you can wear it in fall, you can wear it in winter. You could maybe pull it off in summer as long as it's not too hot. So I think that it kind of takes the Eros DNA and expands the number of uses that it has. Because with the original Eros Eau de Toilette, most people will just be like, oh, it's a club fragrance. And then you'll be like, well, what about to the office? And they'll go, no, nah, it's a club fragrance. What about, you know, doing this or doing that? No, 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 it's just a club fragrance. Now, I don't think that Eros is just a club fragrance necessarily, but I do truly think that this one is more versatile. It has Mandarin, it's got Tonka, it's got Vanilla, it's got Apple, and it has Kinoto. So it's got, a little bit of an added freshness to it. It's not quite as heavy, not quite as in your face, but it still has really good performance. So Versace Eros Flame is one of those fragrances that you can use almost year round in many different situations, and it's a proven compliment beast. So my next one is right here, number five, Guerlain L'Homme Ideal Eau de Parfum. Almond, cherry, vanilla, tonka, and spices are some of the notes in this fragrance. Smells amazing, smells fantastic. Not that long ago, actually maybe just over the past few weeks, there's been a lot of information going around that this fragrance has been discontinued, that it would be no more, that they had axed this one and you know, sent it off to Guerlain L'Omidial Heaven, where it could join this one, L'Omidial Cologne. I really like this one. But it actually looks like this is still being produced as of right now they just changed the bottle design, which they've done with uh, Lome Ideal L'Entance as well. This one smells awesome. I love it. The cherry in it is fantastic. And that really draws people in and pulls compliments. And that's why my bottle looks like it does. By that, I mean empty. 
think if you're gonna get just one from the line, this is the one that I would get personally as far as just all around and cool weather, this one. Warm weather wise, I would get Cologne. It's been discontinued, but you can still find it. Lomity All Cool came out and it's really similar to Cologne, but I prefer Cologne kind of just on a, an aside. So yeah, Lomity All Eau de Parfum. This one smells fantastic. Big compliment puller, very versatile. Daytime, nighttime, fall, winter, and potentially spring as well. And yes, I know some people will bring it up. So Guerlain, yeah, some of you out there consider this a niche house. I get it for sure. For me, I think the Loam Ideal line always fits in better with designer lists, so that's why it's here in this list. And it's also more affordable than Guerlain's higher end stuff, so. Now the number four is also down there, but I'm not gonna move the camera again. I'm just gonna grab it. It's uh, right here, Spice Bomb Extreme by Victor and Rolf. Spice Bomb Extreme smells freaking amazing, fantastic in winter. You guys actually voted it your favorite fall designer fragrance of all time in the tournament that we did. Uh, I believe it was last month. Yeah, so fall and winter. This one is, in my opinion, an improvement on the original Spice Bomb because it's not quite as aggressive. You still get the spiciness. The vanilla is fantastic, really rounds things off, provides a nice contrast, and adds a little bit of sweetness, which, like I said before, for compliments, it's a good thing. This one's fantastic. Daytime or nighttime, it's gonna last forever and people really enjoy it. So there's the first seven. The next three are all right over here. So let's, let's head over here. Number three is this one. Why Eau de Parfum? Not a big surprise. This one has apple, ginger, amberwood, tonka, and sage. That's some of the notes in the fragrance. Enormous compliment puller, no surprise, all these fragrances are. This one is one of the best blue fragrances in the designer realm that you can get. In my opinion, it's one of the most versatile, if not the most versatile. It's a huge attention grabber. You can wear this formally, you can wear this to the office, you can wear this on a date, you can wear this daytime, nighttime, spring, summer, fall, winter, it doesn't matter, it can do it. I like that it has that sweetness in there, which again helps with that mass appeal, helps with that compliment factor, but it's also a little bit grown up. So if you're older, you can still pull this one off. The Y line gets a bunch of hate, but Y Eau de Parfum is amazing. It really is a fantastic fragrance. And the performance on this is really good as well. I still think that this is the best fragrance in the Y line. Y Live is more of an Invictus -y, y fragrance. Still really big compliment puller. Y Eau de Toilette is a little bit fresher and it is a little bit better suited for office wear than Y Eau de Parfum is. But overall, if you're just trying to pack everything into one fragrance, this one's the one to own. Number two is hiding from me a little bit. It's over here. Mont Blanc Explorer. Yes, designer Aventus. Like I said, this is basically Mont Blanc taking Creed Aventus DNA and turning it into a designer fragrance. So it does not have the richness that Creed Aventus has. It doesn't have that smokiness that Creed Aventus has, but it still has the mass appeal that Aventus has. And honestly, might even be more appealing just to the general public. And that's because it doesn't have that smokiness. Instead, it's replaced with modern fresh woodiness. Yes, it's just Aki Gallo wood and Ambroxan, but the way that people are going to interpret that is really nice, masculine, clean, and appealing. And then that bergamot in there does give you an approximation of the pineapple opening in Creed's Aventus. It's super appealing ultra versatile, very easy to wear, big attention grabber as well. And nowadays, Explorer is not that expensive. When it first came out, even at discounters, it was still running a decent premium as far as Mont Blanc fragrances are concerned. But nowadays you can pick this up for under 40 bucks. So Explorer number two. Number one is a fragrance that if you've watched this channel for a while, not a huge surprise. This one right here, Code Absolute from Giorgio Armani. I absolutely love this fragrance. I think that as far as the Armani code line is concerned, as of right now, this is the best one. This is the one to get. Tonka, vanilla, suede, mandarin, and apple, some of the notes in the fragrance. It has similarities to the code fragrances that have come before it. Code Profumo, Code Ultimate, and even the original code a little bit. So it has all these previous iterations in here where you can smell them, but it's like the ultimate evolution 
of those fragrances. It's got really good performance, but it's not too in your face. It's refined enough that somebody can wear this in more formal situations and it's not gonna be out of place. But at the same time, it's got that sweetness where it can pull in compliments, where it can pull in lots of positive attention. There's a bunch to like about this one. The opening has this sort of carbonated effect to it where it really sparkles and jumps off your skin. As it dries down, you get that little bit of suede, that little hint of leather, giving a little bit of a masculine edge to the fragrance, but retaining the sweetness with the tonka and vanilla. Code Absolute is absolutely killer. Fall and winter time, this is a beast. Great evening fragrance, great date fragrance, and you can also pull it off during the day. You've heard lots of people talk about Code Profumo over the years as a really big compliment puller, and it absolutely is. Code Absolute, right there with it. So there we go, my top 10 most complimented designer fragrances of 2020. As I said, 2020 has really sucked as far as compliments go. And I'm sure pretty much all of you out there can attest to that. But these ones that I've featured here today are proven compliment beasts. They've gotten me compliments over the years. And if I'm looking to just pull positive attention and not really think too hard about what I'm wearing, I might be going for one of these. All right, guys, remember, vote on Ferragamo, tacky or cool. I say cool. Let me know some of your most complimented fragrances as well. And I'll see you guys tomorrow with another fragrance video. Stay safe out there.